This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I've set up here a simple scene that shows a kind of dumbbell object which consists of two spheres either end and a scaled cylinder joining the two. But at the moment, each of those objects is completely independent. If I click on the cylinder in the middle and move it up, then it just goes up independently. So everything moves independently of everything else. But there is a way to actually join those together. In fact, there's a couple of ways which are parenting and grouping. We'll have a look at parenting first. If I select a sphere, if I click on the name and drag it onto the cylinder, you can see that now the sphere appears below the cylinder. If I do the same with the other one, then those two spheres are now parented to the cylinder. If I select the cylinder, you now see that the spheres are also selected. And if I move the cylinder up, then the spheres move with it. If I rotate, again, everything moves together. So you can make compound objects from the primitives in this way. There is one drawback to parenting in this way, and that is if we go to scale and just scale it, then you can see that now only the cylinder is scaling. So scale does not translate to other objects that are parented to it. If I drag those off of that, then I can select all three objects and I can do that if you drag to the right of the names and you can select multiple objects at the same time. You can also use the shift key and click on each object in turn. But because they're grouped together, just dragging across is the quickest way to do that. And we can then group them. You can do that by edit group. But you can also see that there's a shortcut for that, which is control G. And you can immediately see that the bounding box now covers the whole compound object. And in the list here, we've got group. Now we can have a look what that group consists of by clicking the little triangle at the side. We can see there's a cylinder and two spheres. If we now try and scale that, the whole object scales in a uniform manner. And of course the rotation and movement or translation is still available. We can always edit the individual elements of that by clicking on the particular element. So if I want that bar to be a little bit thicker, I can do that. If I just grab an edge there, then we can see that we can make the bar in the middle a bit thicker. We just need to reposition that back to the center. We've got group there. Group isn't a very descriptive name. It's always very useful to name your groups and that's available in the properties box up here. So rather than just calling it group, we could call that particular thing dumbbell. And I usually put dumbbell group just to indicate that it is a group. Although you can see from here that that will tell you the type of object if you ever get confused as to the type of object. So you can see immediately that's a group. And then we can just manipulate that as any other object.